Hey servants, welcome back. We're in term four and starting a new topic, which is algebra. So today we'll be covering exercise 5a on introduction to algebra, which is on page 268 of our textbook. Now, some of you guys are really good at algebra already in the sense that you've probably heard of a lot of these terms that we'll be looking at today. Uh, but hopefully you'll be able to refer back to them and do a little bit of revision just to make sure as we move forward, you understand the key terminology. So one of the largest parts of, of working with algebra is understanding the idea of well, what is algebra. So algebra is when we use letters, in which case we'll mathematically we call them pronumerals, we use pronumerals to represent numbers. So instead of writing a number, we'll use a letter to represent that. And any pronumeral that can represent any number we call a variable. Now, in science, we've used the term variable before, and we talked about how a variable is something that can change over time. So for example, the temperature throughout the day is a variable because it changes throughout the day. In maths, it's a number that can change and we can change however we want, and that variable is a pronumeral. Now, there's a couple of things that I do want to mention before we move on to some of the practice questions. And like I mentioned, some of these terms might be quite familiar. If not, it'd be a really good idea to make sure that you write them down in your notebook. So the first thing we're going to look at is the idea of a term. Now, a term consists of numbers and pronumerals combined with a multiply or a divide. Now, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and just draw your attention to this last dot point over here. We've briefly mentioned in the past that in algebra, we don't use a multiply or a divide symbol. In fact, instead of writing, for example, instead of writing four times, and I'm going to pick a random letter, let's say L, instead of writing four times L, we actually write four L. Or instead of writing, let me write an equal sign there, there we go. Instead of writing three divided by, let me pick another letter, let's say B. Instead of writing three divided by B, we write it as a fraction where three is over b, or three divided by b. So just keep that in mind as we move on. So a term that consists of any number or new pronumeral that's combined with a multiple or sorry, a multiply or a divide, or in other words, is written in this form that we looked at on the left. Okay? Now I'm going to draw your attention down over here to this practice question just so that we can put this into practice. So we have an expression, and I'll get into what an expression is later on, but I want you to focus on these numbers and letters here. So for that over there, we can see, okay, well we've got 2p plus 3q plus 5r plus 7. Now you can see that it's separated by pluses in the middle, and we've got values of numbers and pronumerals that are combined with a multiply. So for example, that's a term there because we've got 2 times p. Remember, 2p is 2 times p. So that's a term there. I've also got the term positive 3q. That's another term. I've also got another term here, positive 5r. Remember to keep the positive in mind. And finally, we've got a positive 7 as our term. So these are separated by a plus or a minus, and they're, not, and they're combined together using a multiplier or divide. In this situation, they'll all multiply. But we can identify the terms by doing this process. And I can see, okay, well, I've got 2p as one of my terms. I've got 3q, 5r, and 7. Now, if you would like to, you're more than welcome to write positive 3q, positive 5r, but I like to keep it as just that for now. Okay, the next thing we're looking at is the constant. So that's this line over here, the second dot point here. It says a constant is a term with only numbers and no pronumerals. Now, obviously, we've got these four different terms that we've identified. Okay, I know that there's a P in the first one, a Q in the second one, and an R in the third one. Obviously, the last term, 7, doesn't have any pronumerals. It's just a number. And so I can say that the constant in this expression is 7. Now, there's not always going to be a constant. It could have just been 2p plus 3q plus 5r. But in this situation, I can identify and say the constant is 7. Now, coincidentally, the last question, part c here, is to identify the constant term, which I can just write 7. Awesome. The next dot point we're looking at over here, this third one here, is an expression. Now, an expression is a number or pronumerals that are combined with operations. So this whole thing here is an expression. Now, you might, un might be asking, what's the difference between an equation and an expression? Now, that's pushing a little bit further on, jumping through a few hoops. But just keep in mind that an equation sounds like equal. 
So equations have to have an equal sign. This one doesn't, so it's just an expression. Finally, the last term we're looking at today is coefficient. So coefficient is just a fancy math word to tell you the number in front of a pronumeral. So we've already identified the terms in this expression, which is this line over here. To identify the coefficient, I just look at the number in front of the pronumeral. In this situation, 2p, the number in front of the p is obviously 2. In 3q, I know the number in front of q is 3. Same thing, okay, well 5r, the number in front of r is 5. Now, is there a coefficient of 7? Not really, because, well, there's no pronumeral in that term. There's no pronumeral, and therefore there's no coefficient. Okay, uh, last thing to note for the content part of this lesson is that if there is no number in front of a pronumeral, so for example, let's say I've just got y. If there is no number in front of the pronumeral, I can say that the coefficient is 1. In this case, y is the same as 1y. So we don't have to write it, just like how you don't have to write positive 1 every time, you could just write 1. We don't have to write it, but we write it so that we can see that the, um, that the coefficient is 1. But that's just for future reference if the question, for example, asks you what the coefficient is, and you've given something like that. Awesome. Let's continue on. So putting this into practice, we have to try and write equations or expression, sorry, using this terminology here. So it's a really good idea to be able to do that. So let's say I've got an expression that's five more than k. I like to think about it as if I was to give a number for k, how would I write it? So let's say k is, I'm going to pick a random number, 10. How would I write five more than 10? Well, I can just say 10 plus 5. That would be five more than 10, wouldn't it? In that situation, I know that because 5 more is 10. I'm going to get rid of the 10. I'm going to write k. So 5 more than k can be written as k plus 5. Another example, 3 less than m. I know that m is a certain value. It could be any number. It's a variable, right? It could be any number. It could be 10. Let's use 10 as an example. 3 less than 10. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, that's exactly right. 3 less than 10 would be 10 minus 3. Once again, I replace the 10. I don't write 10, and I write m. So m minus 3 this is another way of writing 3 less than m. Okay. Now, the next part is using oh, creating expressions without using the multiply or divide symbols, just like I mentioned earlier. So we need to write an expression for each of the following without using those symbols. So for the first one, we've got p is halved, and then 4 is added. So if p is halved, I know that p is being halved, or half of p, is just p over 2, isn't it? Because it's just p over half, or p over 2, sorry. And then 4 is added, so I add 4 like this. Now, this is jumping ahead a little bit, but I do want to note, that's not the same as if I was to write p plus 4 over 2. For those of you that have already got a good grasp on this, you'll understand that, okay, well, if I go p over 2 plus 4, that's a different process than if I was to write p plus 4 and then divided by 2. It's actually a different answer, so remember to keep the order in mind. And then finally, for b over here, the sum of x and y is taken and then divided by 7. So the sum of x and y, remember that sum means adding. So adding x and y means x plus y. And then it says, and then divided by 7. So then I get all of that and I divide it by 7. So that's all the content for today's lesson. I know it's quite a little, quite a bit of a terminology. Hopefully it makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions.